Welcome to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we explore how to build freedom through the entrepreneurial process. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and mindset needed to create your lifestyle of independence and flexibility. I'm your host, Ash Whitener, and this is episode 45, Building an Online Fitness Company, with my guest, Rob Dion, owner and CEO of OpenSkyFitness.com. Rob was always an athlete, even as a kid. He was competitive in middle school and high school and college and was always active. After getting married, Rob's lifestyle relaxed a bit and fitness just was not a priority like it used to be. One day, Rob was looking through some old photos and saw a picture that his wife had taken during their honeymoon in Hawaii. And they were standing under a waterfall. It was very picturesque. And Rob noticed one thing. He had a gut. And I started, I, I somehow put on about 30 pounds and I didn't realize it until my wife took this picture of me on our honeymoon, me standing in front of this like picturesque waterfall, awesome, amazing picture. And my gut was just hanging out. <laughs> and I saw, I saw this picture and I'm like, who the hell is that right. guy? He no longer had that lean build that he was used to. And he knew he had to take action. Join us as Rob tells his story about feeling the uneasiness of, with his body image and how he regained the level of health that he was always used to and how he eventually built an online fitness business around this pain that he experienced in order to help others in a similar situation. Rob has a lot of good advice about niching down and finding exactly who you're creating your product or service for. Like they say, the riches are in the niches. Are you ready to become an entrepreneur? Do you want more control over your everyday life? If so, sign up for our weekly newsletter and receive all of our podcasts delivered directly to your email inbox. Also, keep up with us on social media by following on Twitter at Liberty E Podcast and Facebook slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. Show notes are found on our website, libertyentrepreneurs.com, and I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome back, everyone, to Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. I've got Rob Dion on the show today. Rob and I recently met randomly at the Podcast Movement 2016 conference. We were both grabbing a bite to eat at some restaurant, and I uh, saw that he had a tag on that said that he was a podcaster, so we struck up some conversation, and Rob has a very, very interesting fitness blog and company and podcast where he helps people regain that athletic body that they had when they were younger, possibly in their 20s, but now they're in their 30s and 40s, and they need some assistance. Rob, thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. So, Rob, give us a quick background, who you are, and what your story is. Yeah, well, um, my story is maybe a little bit different than most. Uh, I originally, I, I moved to Los Angeles with my wife, who wasn't my wife at the time, um, back in 2005. And I was an actor. And I transitioned from being an actor into being a personal trainer um, just because I was a guy that was like, you know, I was an athlete when I was a kid growing up. I just knew how to work out. So that was when I think I was like 27 and my, uh, I, I transitioned to being a personal trainer and we, my wife and I got engaged at the time. So I guess she was my fiance and life. I was, I was, I was working as a personal trainer. I was an actor. I was a waiter. <laughs> I was juggling getting married. Uh, that was, you know, all that preparation. And over those next two years, I just started gaining weight. And I didn't know, and, and my body started to change because I was no longer in my, my you know, early 20s. I was now in my late 20s, early 30s, and I started, I, I somehow put on about 30 pounds. And I didn't realize it until my wife took this picture of me on our honeymoon, me standing in front of this, like, picturesque waterfall, awesome, amazing picture, and my gut was just hanging out. And I saw, I saw this picture, and I'm like, who the hell is that right. guy? I used to have a six pack. I used to, I, I, I was on the wrestling team. I was on the swimming team. I, I was Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy in the early, you know, in my early twenties. And now I haven't worked out in a long time and, and granted I'm training clients and I felt like this big hypocrite. And, uh, it was like a big wake up call for me because I realized 
that I, I, I just – I had let myself go and I just let everything else in my life take priority and my health took the back seat. And I didn't even know, to be honest, in, I didn't even know what healthy meant mm. at that time. I didn't know – I'm 30 years old. I thought healthy meant I, I should go for a jog once in a while. But I didn't know about nutrition. I didn't know about mental health. I didn't know about physical – really physically how to alter my body. And it's been – that was – I was 30. Right. I mean I'm 39 now. That was nine years. Over the last nine years, I've really gathered a ton of information about myself and what really works for me. So that's, that's kind of my journey and where – how I help my clients. Yeah, so you are your own client. I mean you are the guy. You are your own avatar, the guy that was an athlete who – you know, I don't, I wouldn't say get lazy, but you just started prioritizing other things in life. You're getting married, you know, you're working, you had a ton of jobs and you just kind of fell off the boat. I mean, you don't want to be the fat guy selling the diet book. So how did that lead into open sky fitness, which is your, your most recent? I think that, I think naturally I'm an entrepreneurial kind of person. I, when I, I didn't want to work at a gym. I hate working for anybody else. Um, so what I, I got my, I, I was training clients at their houses. That's how I kind of started people. Uh, I was doing, like I said, I was an actor. I was doing a play and one of the guys in the play asked me if I would start training because I obviously I had a lot of knowledge around, around personal, around just like working out. And so I started training him. He ended up losing about a hundred pounds in the next year or a year and a half. And I needed to get a certification. So I got my certifications and it's, it's kind of snowballed from there and because I didn't work, want to work out in a gym, I, and I knew that it was going to take me a really long time to build up a clientele that I was training at their houses, mm-hmm. uh, I needed a location. So I picked a park that was close to where I lived that I could walk to, um, and I needed to pick a name for my company. And I figured I'm working out outside under the open sky, open sky fitness. There's the name. And that's mm-hmm. how I came up with open sky fitness. And every single thing that I did for the first maybe four or five years was all outside. Everything, oh. all the workouts that I was doing was all outside. So it was with bands, medicine balls, body weight work, uh, plyometric work. And that was, that was how I built my, my repertoire in, in, you know, in fitness was not utilizing, not utilizing heavy weights, not utilizing barbells, dumbbells, anything like that. I had that experience from the past, but I needed to transition my knowledge into being able to uh, be able to you know, have my clients get the results that they wanted by utilizing what was around me. And how did you find people liking or enjoying going to a park rather than going to a gym? I know a gym can be, you know, a, a little bit off-putting at times. Right. Well, for, uh, you know, fortunately, Los Angeles is gorgeous, you know, year-round, 12 months out of the year. We have, we have <laughs> especially this last year, we have minimal amount of rain. So luckily, I didn't really have to cancel. People that, you know, you would, most, I would say, females uh, shy away from a gym. Even men, even guys who, you know, didn't, didn't weren't athletes when they were kids growing up. So they didn't really, you know, I was a gym rat. I was probably spending time in the gym from the time I was 12 years old until I, until I graduated college. So I had a lot of experience in the gym. I understood that there was nothing really to be intimidated by um, and that everybody there was trying to learn. Everybody there was trying to get better. So I didn't really, I didn't really look at it like that. So, but I understood and I started to learn that people didn't want to work out in the gym. They, they felt more comfortable either working out at home or working out in the park because there was no judgment there. There was nobody else that was like staring at them or trying to hit on them, which, you know, for a lot of females, that can be an issue. And how did you build your, your list or how did you build your client base? Because this is very different than, you know, a a normal trainer just inviting you to a gym. This is, this is outside the box. That's true. So for, you know, for you listening, who's considering being a personal trainer, the easiest way to do this is not the way that I did it. So the the easiest way to do it would be get a job at like an LA fitness or an Equinox or something like that, or a crunch. And you, you, you get your certification, you get a job, you have no clients and basically you roam around the floor and you get clients. You know, there are people there that want to work out. Now, that's like soliciting and it's kind of skeezy, but that's how they do it. It's kind of used car salesman type work. Mm. But they do when people, every single person that signs up for that gym gets a free package, like three personal training sessions for free. And the front desk person or the manager dishes those out to the personal trainers. You know, they try to be fair, but usually they're always gearing towards one person. But they, you know, they'll, they'll hand out they'll hand out clients, right? And it's your job to close that client and, and have them buy a package from you and then continue to be there, be your client. Mm-hmm. Um, the way that I had to do it was I had to pound pavement. I had to try to really make changes for certain clients so this way they would talk about it with other people. I would meet people at 
Uh, I would go to um, I would go to bars like outside bars where I would take my shirt off or something like that. And, you know, it, and this is when I first started. So I was in better shape when I first started. So I, you know, so I would be like people would start asking me about fitness, things like that, which is really right. kind of weird. You are your own billboard. I was my own billboard. Um, and then I stopped being my own billboard as life got con- you know, out of control. But th- I would say th- this is one thing that I did. And, and I think it's a, it was a big lesson learned was I put an ad on Craigslist. List. And I wrote, I'm looking for, I'm a personal trainer getting a new certification, looking for clients to practice on at a discounted rate. And I put my discounted rate at $20 an hour. Well, nobody contacted me. So I'm sitting, I'm like, oh, me, man, do I have to, do I have to do like $10 an hour? And my wife, she goes, no, Rob, you have to double that. Right, exactly. So I doubled it to forty dollars an hour, and I, within a, within like within a day, I started getting people contacting me. So that was how I started building it up, and it, and I got and what it allowed me to do is get better and better at the closing, which was really important as a personal trainer. You have to be able to bring somebody in. You have to convince them that you know what you're talking about and that you will be able to help them achieve the goals that they want to achieve by you know, implementing a certain structure that they are not used to, something that you are going to be able to train them through. And that was, that was something that I got really good at. So usually my, my con, you know, conversion rate for a client would be you know, I would probably get 9 out of 10 you know, or 8 out of 10 depending. Um, and that was really how I learned how to, how to close clients and build my business. Yeah. I know you have to sell someone on the image of who they're going to be after they use your services. Like for me, I want people to know that they're going to be a better and stronger entrepreneur and they will have a lifestyle that is more flexible and is more free with you. What is the image that you're selling people? Well, it it depends. It it, it has to be based on their, on their goals, right? So you have to, and, and there's a certain reality so if somebody comes to me, say a, a woman, she's 40 years old, she's had, she has two or three kids already, she's got a husband, she's managing a, she's managing a family, and she's managing a career. And so she's, she's like 30, 40 pounds overweight, and she says, I want to get, you know, I want to lose, I want to lose 40 pounds. Mm-hmm. And I, okay, I, we, can, we can definitely do that. But there's a whole conversation that has to happen around that because she can't just – I can't say, okay, we could do that. Boom. Let's, let's just start working out like madmen, right, or mad ladies and just start like really just start pumping out some weights. You can't – you have to be – you have to be mindful of reality. So it's like, okay, you want to lose 40 pounds. If you were to lose – if you were to look at a year from now and you were 40 pounds lighter, would you be happy? Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. Okay, so – If we were to look at uh, six months from now and you were to be halfway there, would you be happy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be happy. Okay, so that's a little more realistic. We're talking about we're talking about, you know, you know, 25 weeks or or, um, you know, 24 weeks would be basically half a year. Right. So if the Mm -hmm. average person can lose, you know, roughly one pound to up to two pounds, which is, you know, two pounds is basically the borderline. It's where you would be healthy in terms of losing weight. Um. There's going to be, you know, there's going to be ebbs and flows in that. There's going to be plateaus in there. So if you're looking at 20 pounds in six months, or, you know, you can do that healthfully. But also, I would say if somebody's, so if somebody said, you know, didn't have the lifestyle like this, she was just 20 pounds overweight, and she and she didn't have a family, she didn't have kids. You can get there a lot faster. There's a lot less obstacles in the way, right? And the right. reason I'm giving, so I would, I would for that mother, I would say we have to be realistic about what the goal is. I don't want to promise you something and tell you that you're going to get there in you're going to get there in three months when I know that you're going to have to make you're going to still be making macaroni and cheese for your kids. Your husband's still going to come home and want to drink a bottle of wine with you every night. And you're going to you know, you have to transition a lot of things. There's a lot of there's a big conversation to be had with a lot of different people. So this way, the support systems in your life are strong in order for you to have the success you want to have. And, and how, how important are goals? Because you say the woman, just in our example, I want to lose 40 pounds. Well, that, right. you know, that, that's not really a goal. I mean, that's, that's an idea. Right. How do you help people break that down into the pieces of minimal, you know, much smaller achievable goals, maybe on a weekly or biweekly or monthly basis? Right. Well, there's, that's, that's a great question because I think people forget to ask the question, not the question what, but the question why. Mm-hmm. Why do you feel like you need to lose this weight? Why do you why do you want to lose this weight? And then once you know the why, once it's strong enough, then you can figure out the how. 
right? Because it, without your why, so, okay, so somebody comes to me and they say they want to lose this weight, they want to lose the 40 pounds because, well, because my husband doesn't want to have sex with me anymore, mm-hmm. right? That's a really strong why, right? right? And it's like, or I, you know, or I want to lose 40 pounds because, you know, it, next year I'm going to be 40 years old and I'm out of, and I'm really out of shape and I want to, by my 40th birthday, I want to be in the best shape of my life. And, you know, and I, and my doctor, you know, maybe there's a conversation that's, this is really common conversations with their doctor. They're pre-diabetic. They need to, they need to really monitor the amount of carbohydrates they take in, the amount of sugar they take in. And, and, and they're, and they're, they're not capable of lifting or working out on any kind of regimen because the, the 40 pounds is keeping them in a place where they have zero, um, zero energy levels. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's, there's, the conversation has to be about the why. It always has to start with why do you want to do this and the transition into how. And then, you know, the what is easy. It's like I, the what is the 40 pounds. Right. Right. So, and there's a whole bunch of other benefits to losing weight. Uh, you know, there's, and there's benefits of gaining muscle mass. And there's, bit, and, they, and all of that transpires into your energy levels. The way that you view yourself, right? We forget how strong we become as individuals when we realize that we are in power of, we are the ones in power of our own destiny, of our own bodies. We forget this. It's something that we, we just, for some reason, <laughs> we, just put the, we forget that we are the ones in control of ourselves. We are the ones making the decisions. That's right. We are the only ones that are going to act for ourselves. Right, exactly. So once I see that glint of of hope in their eyes, I know that I've got them. Mm. I know that they've, and not that like to sound like this cheesy salesman guy, but I know that they see that vision. Right. Once you see that vision for yourself and once you see and, and understand that that's, you're capable of doing it, well, nothing is stopping you. And there are people that have this, this they think about this the, the, every, every, in every aspect of their life. They're successful in their careers. They're successful in their relationships. They're successful in their physical and mental health. They have, they have this ability. I'm not necessarily one of them that has all of those things. I'm not, you know, trust me, I have just as many struggles as everybody else. I deal with all kinds of depression. I deal with all kinds of physical stuff. I deal with, you know, wanting to eat terrible foods. I have, you know, I, you know, I work on my relationship with my wife all the time. Like there's, I am constantly learning and growing. Yeah. And on that note, let's talk about the puzzle that it takes. You previously mentioned, you know, the mental, the emotional, uh, the physical, all of this is a big puzzle for achieving overall health. Mm-hmm. You know, how many people come to you interested or even knowledgeable about that puzzle versus, Hey, I just need to get out, like you said, and run every day or something. I would say only about maybe 10% of people understand the mental game. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, if, if you don't, if, if you can't understand that, that your that your mind is the is the really the only thing standing in your way physically unless you of course you're you know you're physically injured there's that that's one that's one thing if you have some kind of physical handicap that prevents you from being able to perform um, but then even if you have that then there's there's other avenues that you can take other strategies that you'd have to implement in order to succeed so it, there's there's really no there's no reason to stop yourself and not be able to achieve certain goals but your head, man, what's happening in your mind, what's stopping you from achieving those goals is, is always going to inevitably come back to the way that you view the world, the way that you view yourself, whether or not you think that you are worthy of having those things. You really need to have an internal conversation with yourself and, and be as bluntly honest with yourself as possible to find out what is holding you back from achieving those goals. What is holding you back from having everything in your life that you want? Mm-hmm. And, there's, and, and I think that once you can admit to yourself that you have those limitations, that you're putting those things on yourself, and once you can admit to yourself that those are only limitations that you are, those, that's, like a, that's a jail that you have created. Right? right, those are walls that you have built in your mind. Once you realize those walls don't really exist, well, you know, there's the sky's the limit. 
Yeah. And are these the types of questions that you'll ask people whenever they come to you asking for, Hey, I want to get fit. Okay. Well, do you know what getting fit means? Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's an ongoing look. I can't, I can't be a complete therapist right from the beginning. Right. So it's like, I might, I, I think I might scare some people away if I started this kind of, they'd be like, Rob, I don't want to go that deep. Right. 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 You know, no like, more re- emotional. Relax. Rob. All right. I just push ups, you know. not questions. <laughs> so this is, these are ongoing questions that'll happen during the process. Mm. Right. So with my one-on-one clients, I'll, I'll, you know, say they'll come to me and they'll say, you know, I didn't do any of the workouts that I was supposed to do this weekend. Or I didn't, I, you know, last night I had, I had, um, you know, pizza and then this weekend I had burgers and then, you know, like this has been a terrible four days. And I, and, and then that's what sparks usually sparks the conversation. It's like, okay, what happened? Mm-hmm. Why did you feel like you needed to, you know, I understand that maybe one meal was, you know, uh, what fell off track because you went out with some friends, but then you stopped on the way home from work and, and got Taco Bell. Why'd you do that? Mm-hmm. It's like what was going through your head when you were doing that? What were you thinking about? Were you thinking? Right. So we have to you, you have to it has to be an ongoing thing. It's almost like personal training. There's look, uh, I think I said this to you when we were having when we were sitting down actually at that restaurant in uh, in Chicago. Um, I can give you I can give you the workouts. I can tell you exactly what to do. I can give you the nutrition. I can tell you exactly what to eat. Right. But unless you get, unless you understand why you're making the decisions that you're making, you'll never see the results. You'll never achieve the success you want to achieve unless you realize what's getting in your way, what's truly right. getting in your way. We are all out there struggling to find the right information. Unfortunately, we're not unfortunately, but fortunately, it lies within us. We just have mm-hmm. to, we just have to be able to tap into it and be honest with ourselves about what it is. And, and a lot of good information is on your website, Rob. I, yeah. I think that you just launched a brand new website yesterday. I didn't even get a chance to see your old website, but this this new one looks terrific. Yeah, I'm, I'm t- so glad you didn't get to see the old one. <laughs> <laughs> you have nothing. Yeah, there's nothing to compare it to. Um, yeah, it's this is this is I'm super happy with this. Yeah, it's great. And you also have a podcast. So just talk to me about why you decided to change your website. What are you going for here? And yeah. the significance of having a podcast, which we're starting to see more and more. You know, right. People having online businesses, you can't just sell one thing anymore. You have to sell an entire package and create a community around what you're selling. That's a right. podcast is a great way to do that. How, how do you expect the website and the podcast to aid you in building this business or continue to build this business? Yeah, this is – well, there's a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of levels in this. Okay, so – and, and, dr- and drop the name of the website real quick yeah it's openskyfitness.com is the website um so until until uh maybe nine months ago i was floundering right i was i was i went to podcast movement last year i made a lot of connections i made a lot of friends just like you know you and i are are becoming you know Mm -hmm. friends with each other and we're gonna you know we're gonna continue to grow grow our relationship well i grew some relationships from last year and one of the relationships was with uh, a guy named anthony tran he has a website called marketing access pass and he coached me for you know for six months because I was lost. I was lost the way a lot of entrepreneurs are lost. Like we're just doing and doing and doing and doing and doing and we have no idea what direction we're going. We're just we're we're buckshotting. You know, we're like scatter shots in every direction and we just and and it keeps us in infinitely busy. There's just there's a never ending list of sh- of sh- I don't know if I can curse on your show, but like of shit to do, right? Yeah, there's yeah. this never ending list. And so one of the, the first, and this is this. If you can, if you, the listener right now, could take one thing away from this, and you are creating a business, you have to know exactly who you're talking to. Mm. You have to be able to talk to that person as if you can literally snap a picture of them out of out of life. So, w- one of the first conversation that I had with my business coach, and he asked me, he's like, "Who's your avatar?" And I was like, "Well, people like me." And he's like, "Okay, what does that mean?" And I was just like, "Well, you know, guys that you know." want to get healthy. And he's like, okay, we're, we have some work to do here. Mm-hmm. You know, so we, we eventually, we dialed it into, yes, it's people like me, but it's, it's men and it's women. It's people in relationships over 35 years old who, yes, used to be athletes when they were younger, because that's, that's my journey, my journey. Right. And, and same with my wife. She was a dancer. We, our journey is we used to be extremely athletic as kids growing up. 
we were extremely active. We, you know, we didn't necessarily pay attention to food because we didn't grow up in families where food was an issue, was a, was a priority, but mm-hmm. it didn't affect us because we were so unbelievably active. So, and, and, and then I gained about 30 pounds, which is, you know, where I think my wheelhouse is with helping people lose weight, 20 to 30 pounds. You can get that. You can really, if you dial it in, you can lose that weight. And then, and then, you know, just restructuring your life in terms of figuring out what your priorities are. Right. Yep. It, and yep. so that's that's basically that's basically now the avatar. So for the for for you listening, if it's if you don't know who your avatar is, I can I can tell you right now, my my guy that I talk to or woman is pushing a you know, a baby carriage. She's got a dog. She's got her Starbucks. She's on the phone. She's doing work as she walks by, you know, and the same thing for the guy. And they, you know, they have that 20, 30 pounds of baby weight and the guys gain it too. 20, 30 pounds of baby weight, their, their, you know, sympathy, sympathy weight that they gain with their, with their, um, with their wife. And they just, they, they realize that when they start to try to lose that weight again, they do the same thing that they did when they were early, in their early twenties. It doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work because there's no lifestyle around it. It's just, you're trying to put a bandaid on bullet wood. You're bleeding out and you, and you don't know how to fix it. So right. now you're now you're struggling because you've got all these other broken systems that are happening in your life and you have to you have to address every single one of them. The workouts is one, the nutrition is another, the family life, the support systems is another, the mental health around it, the the, the mental mind frame around it is another. There's just all these different all these different um columns that hold this this foundation, this this house up, this this roof up and if you're not if you're not constantly adjusting and fixing then the whole structure is going to crumble. Yeah, you mentioned support system. How has your podcast played a role in that support system? It's been, you know, the podcast has been, has given me a voice, right? Mm-hmm. It's giving me an opportunity to practice my voice, right? And, and really deliver a specific message. But, you know, I don't look at the podcast as an entrepreneur. I don't look at the podcast as an opportunity to be a, um, to make money. Right. I don't I don't look at it like that. I look at it as an opportunity for me to talk directly to my audience, but also to make connections like like you and I are making connections right now. It's a way to network. I can reach up. I can reach really high up and I can talk to people in the fitness arena, the nutrition arena, the mental health arena, the the time strategy arena, all these different things that would help people strategically change and improve their life. And I, I get to do that one-on-one with them. I get to have a conversation mm-hmm. with them and get to talk to them for an hour. And then I built a, a bridge for me, to right. the, for me to them. Absolutely. And then any time in the future that I have a question, it could be for myself, for a client, I, I know who to go to. And you've got access because you have a platform. And it looks much more impressive That's than right. if you're just a guy doing some push-ups in a park <laughs> wanting to talk to someone. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, my podcast now, we just, we're just we at 105 episodes this week. So, Woo-hoo. yeah, I know. big. It was a big – crossing that 100 episode was a, was a big great. step forward. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been it, – it, it, there is, a, there is an, a, an insane amount of legitimacy that comes with having a podcast, especially when you get those high numbers, especially when you have certain people that you've had on your show that do have – uh, a, a social media following, or even just like I had Tony Horton on as my 101 episode, um, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, I think most people know him from P90X, but he's a he's a heavy hitter in the fitness world. You know, he was the Tony. guy who created. He's basically the guy who created um, uh, infomercials for fitness that like those these programming like it was like all the, his company Beachbody. Well, that's not just his company, but like those guys basically started an era of yeah. fitness on you know for for DVD fitness workout. Rob, well, I really appreciate you coming on to the show. Is there any contact information, any words of advice, anything you'd like to offer my audience? Uh, yeah, man. Well, you know, if people want to find me, they can go to openskyfitness.com. All my links to my social media are there. It's just everything is basically doesn't matter where you go. It's just at Open Sky Fitness. Um, if you guys want, what I did do was I put together a uh, jumpstart guide. Which is, you know, it talks about, you know, getting into the right mind frame using smart goals, smart, the smart philosophy. Um, also talking about uh, showing you how to do some home workouts with bands. Very, very simple, easy home workouts to do with bands. Uh, and then there's nutrition advice, recipes in there, a uh, place to where you can purchase those bands. Uh, that's just on Amazon, super easy. But if you want to get started, it's a really easy jumpstart guide. It's like 20, 25 pages. Uh, you can easily do that right now by texting the word workout to the number four 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 two two two, 
work out all one word to the number 44222 and they can easily download that free jumpstart guide uh it's super super easy and um yeah i'd love to hear your feedback on it because anybody anybody that does it you know, it's, uh, it, I think it can really help someone get the ball rolling, get you in the right mind frame and give you some of the tools just to get the, the, the ball going. Right. Yeah. So yeah. That's... And, and tell people about your podcast as well. Oh yeah. And then there's the open sky fitness podcast. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. Uh, yeah, I, I do a mixture of interviews and one on, and, and just like one off shows where my wife and I will talk about certain topics. Uh, I've interviewed, like I said earlier, I mentioned Tony Horton, but I, I talk to people all over the world that are uh, that are experts in their field, whether it be fitness, nutrition, mindset, t- time management. Uh, we we touch on everything: Olympic lifting, power lifting, whatever you can possibly be interested in that will trigger you into making the decision to switch into a healthier lifestyle. That's who we try to bring on our show. They have to have an inspiring story, and they usually have some kind of something to offer our our listeners. Well, Rob, it's been such a pleasure today. Ash, thank you. I had a great time. You just listened to episode 45, Building an Online Fitness Company with Rob Dion. Don't forget the saying, the riches are in the niches. Rob's advice can save you a ton of time and energy when deciding who your ideal client is. If you find value in what I'm doing and producing, then please share these episodes on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I can't do this without you, and I'm not too proud to ask for your help to support the show. Entrepreneurs can't be successful alone, and I really need your feedback and social media support. Feel free to send me a private message or an email at info at libertyentrepreneurs.com. And thank you again for spending this time with me. And keep building freedom.